Okay, in this video, we're gonna go over number two from the 2010 Calculus A, B, and B, C exams. It was the same question on both of those exams. It's a question about naming a baby elephant. So let's see what we're gonna do here. Uh, so a zoo sponsors one day contest to name a baby elephant. Zoo visitors deposit entries in a special box between noon, which is t equals zero in our table, and 8 p.m., which is t equals eight in the table. The number of entries in the box t hours afternoon is modeled by a differentiable function e between zero and eight. And then they just tell you that the values of e of t are in the table. E of t has weird units. It's hundreds of entries. So like when t is equal to two, uh, the value of e of t is four. That is four hundreds of entries. And I'm gonna say it that way all the way through. So I'm not gonna say 400. I'm gonna say four hundreds of entries because it's just the easiest way to deal with it. All right, so for question A, Use the data in the table to approximate the rate in hundreds of entries per hour at which the entries were being deposited at time t equals six. So this is asking us for basically e prime of six. Um, so to find that, we're gonna go from five to seven because those are the closest things in the table that we can use. So e prime of six, approximately, um, we're just gonna do slope of a secant line. So e of seven minus e of five over seven minus five and then, uh, so that's gonna be 21 minus 13 over five minus, nope, seven minus five, which is two. And then overall that is four. And then for the units, I'm gonna write um, hundreds of entries per hour. I mean, they gave that to you, so like you really don't need to write units on this one, but you should always write units if you know them. So hundreds of entries per hour. All right, let's look at the next question. It says to use a trapezoidal sum with four sub intervals given by the table to approximate the value of one over eight, the integral from zero to eight e of t dt. Then using correct units, explain the meaning of one over eight integral from zero to eight e of t dt in terms of the number of entries. So I'm gonna ruin the surprise for you. Every time that you see uh, that kind of an integral with the coefficient there, that's how the college board chooses to write average value of a function. I think it's for typographical reasons because otherwise the uh, like line spacing would look really weird with the denominator. Um, but that's all we're doing. We're finding the average value. So we wanna find uh, 1 eighth the integral from zero to eight e of t dt. If you had to guess, you could probably guess the thing that most people forget about this. They forget to multiply by one over eight. Like they get so focused on approximating the definite integral that they just forget that one over eight. So it's approximately one eighth. That's from the one eighth that's sitting out there. Now we're gonna do our trapezoidal sum. So trapezoids, it's one half, and then from zero to two is two, and then uh, sum of the bases, so four, and then plus another one half. From two to five is three, and then sum of the bases is 17. And then it's going to be one half, and then it'll be two, and then the sum of the bases is 34, and then one half, the difference here is one, and then the sum of these is 44. Okay, so let's close that parenthesis. And then uh, this is actually a calculator question, so I use the calculator to uh, get the value. Strictly speaking, you do not need to actually um, get the numerical value of this. You could leave it in this, uh, the way it's currently written. I don't really recommend that because I feel like by finding the value, you can at least get an idea of whether or not you mess this up, right? So like the average value of the entry shouldn't be like 40 because no number in the table is 40. So I think it's useful to find this, but strictly speaking, you do not need to. All right, so now I need to interpret this. Um, so it's, it's definitely, uh, let's see. So uh, the E of T is in the number of hundreds of entries, right? So uh, I'm gonna say that 1 eighth integral from zero to eight E of T dt is the average number or the average value of, the average number of hundreds of entries in the box, but when? So it's gonna be between um, zero, which is actually noon, so I'm gonna say noon, which is t equals zero, and then 8 p.m. So we're trying to interpret it in the context of the problem, so saying between t equals zero and t equals eight, probably not good enough. 
what we want to do is we want to connect it, right? So t equals zero is noon, t equals eight is actually 8 p.m. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. Uh, at 8 p.m., volunteers began to process the entries. Uh, they process the entries at a rate modeled by a function p, where p of t, so this is given, you should get the PDF of the problem and you can read it. p of t is t cubed minus 30t squared plus 298t minus 976. Hundreds of entries per hour. This is only relevant between 8 and 12, right? So between 0 and 8, people are putting entries in, and then from 8 to 12, people are going to process them. So it's almost like a rate in, rate out problem, except we're only dealing with one, one rate at a time, really. Um, according to the model, how many entries had not been processed by midnight? All right, so let's think about what we know. Like, essentially, the question is how many are left at t equals 12. So to figure that out, I would need to know how many they started with. And since they start processing at t equals 8, I look at the table and I can see 23. So they start with 23 hundreds of entries. That's a lot of entries to name this elephant. Um, then I need to know like what rate are they going out, right? When, how are they being processed? So the rate out for this problem is the P of T that we're given. And then the question is how many left at T equals 12? So what I'm going to do is the amount I started with and then minus the amount that's been processed. So the integral from, we're only processing between 8 and 12. So it's going to be the integral from 8 to 12 and then of P of T dt. And then it's a calculator problem. So we use the calculator, you get exactly seven. So, I mean, I, I probably didn't mention it, but I think it's incredible that uh, they're able to write a problem where that integral works out so well. Um, so we get exactly seven. And then the units for this are hundreds of entries again, because we are um, figuring out E of T, right? E of, well, we're not figuring E of T, but like it has the same units as E of T. So this will be hundreds of entries. All right, let's take a look at the last part. According to the model from part C, which is where you use P of T, um, at what time were the entries being processed most quickly? Um, so I immediately kind of key in on the words process most quickly, and I think closed interval, looking for like the biggest value, that's definitely the candidates test. So we're gonna use candidates test on this. Every time I use the candidates test, I like to write down the justification for using it. So um, P of T is continuous, therefore the absolute max. And in this case, I'm gonna uh, interpret it in the context of the problem, which means process most quickly uh, will occur at either an endpoint or a critical point. Now I need to find the critical points. So I need P prime of T to equal zero, but remember calculator. So I just had the calculator solve uh, the derivative is equal to zero, and the calculator gave me these values. I didn't like how many decimals it gave me, so I made it give me more, um, and so I'm gonna write those down. So we're gonna go 9.183503 and 10.816497. Okay, so with the candidate says the next thing we wanna do is make a table. So we're gonna have T and then P of T. And then we're gonna test the endpoints and the critical points. So eight is one endpoint. Then now I'm rounding to three decimals. So I think part of the reason they always ask for like the time on this question is because depending on how you choose to round, you might get a different value for P of T. Use as many decimals as you can and you'll always be right to three decimals, which is all that actually matters. So then I took these values and I just subbed them in on the calculator. Um, I didn't screen capture that. Uh, and so the answer is the maximum in this table, right? P of T, the biggest you get from these four values is eight, so that's gotta be it. So I'm gonna write that down. Entries process most quickly at T equals 12, and that is the entire problem. All right, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.